when you clarify your vision with specificity and allow yourself to dream fucking big, you become a different person. It is June 2nd, 2019. My name is Josh Moxie. I'm an aspiring entrepreneur and I have recorded, this is my second time recording this. The first time was, uh, is, was challenging. I was judging myself a lot. I had a really strange episode. Like it was pretty good, but like I wanted it to be better. And equally, I found that after I was done recording, I had the entire thing. It was, the picture was so fucking blurry. It was out of focus completely for the whole, whole fucking reflection. So I decided, hey, let's go for a, a quick bike ride. Let's get an energy session down on myself. Shout out mom, appreciate you. And let's come back and try again. So this is what I'm doing right now. Reflections, by the way, is a weekly series where I get on camera and I talk about what worked, what didn't, what I learned, how I grew, etc. And I am aiming to document my journey in a given point in history, like timestamp my week. I am so fucking chill right now, it's amazing. And uh, hopefully I can bring you some value in the process, which is my goal for today. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode and let's make it a better episode than 47 was supposed to be, quote unquote. Anyways, let's do this. What's been on my mind? Ever after, we are close as fuck right now. We are four days away. Brian gets here soon. Excited to see everyone, really. It's gonna be a fucking, it's gonna be a weekend and a half. Hopefully the best weekend ever, though I honestly don't even give a shit. Mostly because I have clearly defined my vision. And then when the vision's properly defined, everything else becomes meaningless. Now since Ever After is coming up, that means I am gonna be talking to a bunch of people. And that means, I'm all, and funny enough, I'm actually meeting with a lot of people this week in terms of like catching up with some old friends and stuff like that. And I have like this thought on my mind of like, have I done enough nervousness around explaining, hey, how you been type of thing. And I'm, I'm like, I haven't progressed the way I would like to type of thing, but I am making progress nonetheless and just like learning to be okay with that. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Anyways, I have, I wish I had more progress to report with people, but I don't right now, and that's the reality. What were my favorite wins? <sighs> Clarifying Mox Energetics vision. This felt incredible. It grew me a ton, my lord. I feel like a completely different person after, after that uh, clarifying session, and it was literally just me sitting down, writing out two pages, and just allowing myself to dream big, and allowing myself to actually specifically write down what I actually wanted. Even if I didn't believe it could happen, just the act of getting it down made it so much more real. I was able to get a much better picture in my mind. I was able to be more excited. I'm now much more certain about my future, where I'm headed, and the road it's gonna take to get there. And uh, the road won't always be, or maybe it will be actually clear, but as of right now, it's pretty fucking clear and uh, I will figure things as time goes out, or as time goes on rather, but I, it just feels so fucking right. I'm so glad I fucking did that. I edited nine episodes for content and posted six. Road to catch up, we're close. Probably this time next week, I should be caught up, which will feel fucking incredible. Making progress and writing a comparison that crystallizes what energy work actually does in terms of real estate, that was cool and it was challenging before, it's getting easier. It's looking quite well actually at this point, but glad that's making progress because it really crystallizes what a non-ideal house is in terms of one that sell or one that doesn't sell versus one that sells fast and above asking price, that type of thing. Scheduled my whole week in advance. That was really fucking cool. I have been so resistant to scheduling my entire week out in front of me, but learning the lessons that I did last week really helped me with, and I mean, sorry, <laughs> a little bit ago, uh, last reflections, I covered a little bit of uh, time blocking lessons and stuff like that, but applying them has been super, super good and being okay with adjusting my schedule as I go. And yeah, I'm so glad though. It's like and another win in related to that is taking 30 minutes every day to just practice 
things that I've me- I've been meaning to do in terms of energy work and uh, just Kaizen in that aspect because it's been something I've really put off recently, but it feels so fucking right to do so. What worked? So my dad was really fucking pissed at one point this week and he said something that was about me and he didn't say it to me, he said it behind my back, but I got word of what he said and it really pissed me off. But instead of crumbling like most people would, I decided, hey, I'm gonna make him look like a fucking idiot for saying this comment, not through trying to say anything to him or trying to prove him wrong or whatever, actually trying to prove him wrong, but not directly. Channeling that immediately into action and uh, using that negative energy I was possessing in that moment to create positive momentum. And then from there, once I am, so t- tapping into the dark side, but then once I do get that progression, that progress, that progress, um, then switching back to the light side and feeling a lot better. Because if you stay there, it's deadly, but I think I did a good job of that. Making time to practice and get prepared. I have struggled with preparation my entire fucking life. Cause back to like school, I was just so unprepared for assignments and tests. It was ridiculous. So in efforts, uh, in effort to get better at that. And it's something that I think is very crucial. If I want to be successful is I had to be prepared. It's luck is opportunity meets preparation. And I completely agree with that. And for me, I'm doing a better job right now of preparing myself with practice. So for example, with the pitch for Mox Energetics, scheduling in time, and I have to do a better job of scheduling in even more, but scheduling in time to just practice and it's uncomfortable as fuck, but it's the right fucking move. Using end times and stopwatches to stop me from going forever. Um, I feel like a man can do anything so long as it's not forever. And I also feel like tasks extend to whatever timeline they're allotted. Those two things, I think, (laughs) if you're paying attention, it's a good idea to have an end time for your tasks because they can go forever and you will, uh, you will, you can just get so much more done if you place an end time and make it short. So for me, even just like reflecting this morning, I, that could take two, three, four hours sometimes if I'm feeling crazy enough with it. (laughs) But instead, I allotted myself an hour and 30. I did it an hour and 15 type of thing. And just constantly keeping that time in my awareness and moving fast. And I just like ripped through it. I went so fucking fast. I got a shit ton done in that period. And it worked so fucking well. I can stress for content titles and try to figure out like, oh, I don't know which one it is. Should I archive this? Should I keep it? Should I change this title? Should I leave it? What is the right description? What are the right tags? Use muscle testing, makes everything so much fucking easier. Or, and if you can't muscle test, you just use your gut. Um, I find that I am too attached sometimes, actually not even sometimes, most times, if I'm really involved in the process, I find myself very attached to it. So, and that's a pattern in itself that we'll talk about later in this episode. But, uh, and I know that because I've already done this episode. (laughs) Waking up earlier and then napping midday. For me, I really struggle with getting up early. It's not easy to wake up at 5 a.m. Oh my God, it just sounds awful. But right now I have such a better better view of that time because it's just so fucking nice being up. So channeling my whys and that is also helpful. And uh, knowing that I don't have to stay up for forever, I can have another period somewhere midday or like, so I wake up at 5 a.m. Right now, most days, try to at least. And nap is around, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. type of thing, maybe in 30 minutes to 90 minutes, somewhere in between there that I nap. And it's a, it goes back to actually, a man can do anything so long as it's not forever. I'm okay with waking up at 5.30 if I have really low amounts of sleep because I know, hey, I'm getting another block where I can recharge and I just have to go for this one period and then we'll get there. So that's super fucking helpful. Putting tasks before working out. Specifically right now I have block time for power list and just tackling the power list as soon as I get up out of my out of my uh, morning ritual hitting the power list as soon as possible is so nice I find that when I have the most energy like it's it, I kind of lose my mental clarity a little bit after working out so it's tougher to have things right after that if they're too logical in nature so if I am waking up I have that like strong mental energy and it's a great time to put 
tasks that I'm, I don't feel like doing that are really uncomfortable, it somehow makes them easier. I don't know why, but I like that I've added that back in. It's something I used to do really fucking well and I fell off with it, but I'm glad it's back. Time blocking as a whole. Incredible. Monday was the most output I've had in such a long time. It was because I was following everything to a fucking, almost to a T and it just, it came out so fucking well. I'm really glad that uh, this is working so well and I'll continue to get better as time goes on. Future pacing at Ever After. I went to Bingham's, which is where Ever After is held, and I literally was like saying to myself, I've earned this, I've earned this. I walked through the fucking line. I pretended I was getting patted down. <laughs> I, uh, I walked down the hill. I did it like a celebratory thing and just tried my best to imagine exactly what it would be like a week from now. And that was it at the time. Uh, how many days were left and I did struggle to a degree, but my hope is that there was at least 68 seconds in there that were properly intended, which means that is created, or at least the seed is planted at an energetic level, slash law of attraction, slash quantum physics, slash who gives a fuck, whatever it is, it's real as fuck. So yeah, I'm glad I did that. What worked? Letting my ego convince me that extra sleep is a good idea. And I'm specifically referring to when you're half awake and you're like contemplating, oh, should I go back to bed? Don't do it. <laughs> if you're really trying to wake up early, like for me, what happened is I woke up at five. My, I was like trying to figure out, I'm like, okay, 30 minutes. Should I do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. And I ended up sleeping for five fucking hours. So yeah, that's not the most useful. <laughs> that's not the best way to do of doing things. So that nap can be super helpful, but just wake up. If you're feeling really tired, then go back to bed later. But just like, there can be that period where you like rationalize why it's a good idea to go back to bed, but it might not be true. So wake the fuck up, evaluate like a couple hours later, and then take another nap if need be. Giving too much positive approval. I think positive approval is helpful in that I'm trying to be supportive to people and kind. And it is my struggle when I don't do that. I feel like I'm not being two of those things and those things are important to me, but, uh, I'm not doing that other person. A dis I'm, I'm doing that person a disservice by being like, it almost doesn't, it almost steps into nice, which is uh, something I don't want, which is fake kindness. And, uh, yeah, people deserve some people earn and deserve some negative approval or di <laughs> negative approval. They earn some disapproval sometimes. And I have to be okay with giving that because, and giving harsh truth if need be, because uh, even if they're too fucking sensitive to hear it, they should help me or they should be thankful for it long term. If they're not, that's okay. I can't be attached to that. But uh, it's important to just be real with people and uh, not give fake positive feedback or fake validation. Yeah. So even though I did say that the, the time blocking is working incredible, and it is, there's also so much that's not working with it. So there's a fine balance of like, hey, this is working. Hey, this has work to be done on it and ways to improve. So uh, I find myself as I found myself as, as the week went on, I got less and less disciplined with it. And I ended up letting content take over the wheel and mox energetics fall a little bit more to the wayside. And I know that I'm trying to catch up with content right now and it'll be a lot easier when I'm caught up because I'll be able to just focus on Mox Energetics completely or close to completely because I'm, I'm going to probably do like three or four episodes a week, which means like there's just a lot of reflections editing. That's that's the pro fucking time consuming thing right now. Five thousand percent. But uh, what was I writing down here? Yeah, I uh, I've just got to do a better job of being more disciplined, sticking with it more, adjusting for next week and making sure I'm properly prioritizing and doing my best to follow it. I'm not gonna be perfect by any means at following this, but the closer I can get to perfect, the better. I sometimes look at my check-ins as they go off on an hourly basis. I've got an alarm every hour while I'm not sleeping like this that goes off and asks, and it, it encourages me to check in and ask like, how am I doing with my day? What are my daily goals? And this is part of the problem right here. I don't have like a clear order of questions and I've got to do a better job of defining those and making sure I'm walking down those stairs, quote unquote, because I find myself just like hitting stop and then accidentally being involved in like a podcast, maybe I'm listening to it or 
maybe I'm in a conversation with someone. The the more people are involved, the harder it is for, for me to check in. Because it's like, how the fuck can I multitask? And I don't want to be like, yo, pause real quick. So that's, I've, I've got to just do a better job of shortening it when I'm with other people and making it really simple. Like, how can I improve? That could be just a, the simplest question and it gets the ball rolling. And also when it does come up and I'm busy with something, just maybe pressing snooze or having those questions clearly, clearly defined where I just, yeah, that type of thing. <laughs> my thumbnails and actually really everything with the podcast right now, meaning like my my banners, my podcast logo, my titles, my descriptions. I just feel like nothing is working the way it should be right now. SEO, all that jazz. And uh, it's as soon as I catch up with content, that is my actionable right there to focus more on getting those things updated because I just don't like them right now and they're not creating the results that I want them to. So letting fear of networking cripple me. It's okay to have a fear of networking, but as soon as you let it cripple you, that's where it becomes dangerous. There's uh, one of Gary Vee's right-hand man, uh, D-Rock. He consistently does posts here and there where he'll do like networking posts, like, hey, what do you do? Introduce yourself, and how can you help other people? And I've just been so paralyzed uh, from doing that, and it comes from probably some insecurity stuff, not feeling like I'm good enough, which is, I think, interesting because we were working on this at uh before as i got my energetic session like be- because of this reflections and it just seemed like good enough was a a reason why i was judging myself a lot in the past reflection so i have to do a better job of scheduling in even more time to practicing nimsem and mox energetics explanations and get really fucking crystal clear and comfortable with explaining that to people and also equally being okay with not having a perfect explanation down, just explaining as I go and being okay with fucking up. Uh, I also have to do a better job of getting okay with being rejected and no one cares and that's fine. You just have to, there's more There's more work to be done there. Also doing truth and lies and energetic work on it and then just fucking do it. That is that is my, uh, my plan there. Being attached to outcomes. This manifests in a million different forms right now response to people or responses from people uh getting texts back yeses and nos like kind of just wanting yeses from people um and also the attachment to no nos type of thing um muscle testing and the the answers i'm getting from that and being right like there's just a lot of attachment going on <laughs> that i'm noticing and i really have to take the time to and schedule this in as well to do some truths and lies on that those type of topics as well as the attachment part of things and equally do some energetic work on it and have a third person like a third party person help me to understand if it's more conscious or more energetic in nature and that's significant by the way because if i have that data i can now know what to focus more on having delicious smelling food around me and in my room after i'm done eating this is torturous stop doing this to yourself i had like hash brown casserole at one point this week i was done eating and i thought all i could smell was this delicious food that was just entering my nostrils and it was like oh my god i want this so bad right now hash brown casserole is just incredible you've got the cheese you've got the hash browns sour cream all that good shit (laughs) oh god i cannot wait till i'm over with this cut i just i want some food badly what were my biggest lessons Clarifying your vision and making it as specific as possible and equally trying to find if there's any blocks and working on that consciously or energetically I mean all of the above really is the answer But the best way to create self-motivation is by doing that Um, For me this week taking the time to sit down and clearly define my mox energetics plan and vision and just get fucking excited and allow myself to dream fucking big it it self-motivates on just a way different level that you can't get that from something externally like listening. If you're looking for external motivation, but your vision isn't clearly defined, that's a recipe for long-term disaster. Your vision has to be believable. It has to be exciting. It has to be something that pulls you. And that's like the main thing right there. If it's believable and exciting, it is going to energetically pull you. You don't have to push so much. It's going to attract you it's going to magnetize you towards it 
And that's like the, the powerful thing of a clearly defined, specific dream, vision, whatever. It starts magnetizing you towards it. That's so fucking cool. Audio self-motivation is insanely helpful. I'm not exactly sure what the root cause of why this works is, but I was listening to my Ever After, Earning Ever After podcast this week, and I listened to it probably like five to ten times. Oh my god, it's so nice to hear myself make claims on that, and then like I'm immediately like, fuck, I said this, I had to back it up to everything. So that works really well, and I'm intrigued to see all the possibilities I can create with this in terms of should I just make audios where I talk about my vision and get myself excited because as soon as I feel off, if I ever listen to that episode, it clarifies me in terms of if I don't feel like working towards ever after type of thing, if I take the time to listen to that, I immediately think or I immediately feel like working on ever after after. And when I say working on ever after, I'm talking about the plan I outlined in that and following through. So I'm intrigued to see where I can apply this going forward, but it's very fucking nice to have it on while you're driving or in the shower or whatever, you don't need to look at anything. You can just listen to yourself talk about your goals and dreams and it's interesting, very interesting. To find your purpose, take the time to get to know yourself. I was listening to Dan Dapani and oh my God, I think it's actually pronounced Dan Dapani, but regardless, that guy is a spiritual gangster, love him. I was listening to London Real and he was talking about it's as simple as sitting down for five minutes a day. And this does not mean driving or biking or walking your dog. It is chilling in your bed, against the wall, just sitting and just being with yourself and having a conversation. So few of us do this, including myself. And we might rationalize that we're doing that, but we are doing something else during. And that's not true attention right there. So with that being said, he recommends in you could find your purpose in an, in an entire, just in seven days, you could find your purpose by just starting out on day one, five minutes, talk to yourself and start asking yourself basic questions like, hey, how are you doing? Like, what do you think of, uh, what do you think of that new trade by the leaves? Like <laughs> something as simple as that. You start off with a very basic conversation and just, you, and as, and when day two comes along, you up the, conversation just a little bit more you get a little bit deeper and on day three just a little bit more deeper and by the time you get to something like day six seven eight type of thing you can have very deep conversations with yourself because you're comfortable in your presence and this is just five minutes a day of just talking to yourself and asking yourself questions back and forth and having a conversation like you would with a regular human and you can start to ask yourself these big questions like why am i here what is my soul's purpose in this lifetime? What is the purpose of life? Like what, what is my next mission? What is my next purpose? I don't know, whatever the questions you, and like you might not necessarily agree with those type of questions, but find the deep questions that resonate with you and go do those things. And uh, I'm interested to see, or see if any of you apply this because I think it has a lot of value if you do apply it. I really would like to start applying this. I haven't yet, but I felt it was just so important that I share share this on this, regardless of if I've started or not, because it's just it's just wow. And uh, two amazing quotes, by the way, from that London Real podcast was number one. This is from his guru. There's nothing more important in life than knowing who you are, the le- the path that you're on, and its final end. It's just incredible. It's so fucking real. And kind of related to that is you can't know the path if you don't know the destination. And that is by Dan Dapani himself. Just wow. Incredible dude. Can't wait to learn from him more because he is, he is just awesome. He really is. Physical touch might be in my top two love languages. I never thought about physical touch being that high, but after I did a quiz, it actually kind of made sense. I'm like, okay, why is this so high? Well, for one, I just fucking love giving and receiving hugs. If they're genuine and loving, it feels so fucking nice. And uh, yeah, man, love languages are incredible. They just, I wish everyone would just send me their results. It would make it so much easier to interact with that person. Um, By the way, my other ones are, my top is words of affirmation. My bottom is gifts, just in case you're wondering. Quick hack to make your coffee a little bit colder without diluting it. I really don't like diluted coffee. I like warm, but pure. And I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait that like 
X amount of minutes. I just want to start drinking my coffee. I don't want to wait for it to cool down. So very fucking simple. Make a pot of coffee. When the coffee's done, pour it in an ice cube tray and then freeze it. Take those ice cubes, which are going to be brown, by the way, and full of coffee, obviously, and then put it in a Ziploc, freeze that shit, put it back in the freezer. And then every time you're making a coffee, just add like one, two, three ice cubes, depending on how many, how much you make and, and how much coffee you make. I mean, and then, uh, yeah, they're golden. It goes from warm or it goes from blistering hot to warm in a second. What challenges did I experience? Feeling fraudulent if I don't work on Moxie Energetics for long enough. I found that like when I was doing a catch up day with content one of these days this week and I wasn't working a ton on Moxie Energetics, I felt like fucking shit. It felt so fucking wrong. I felt like a fake entrepreneur and I just, yeah, felt like shit. Was filled with regret, didn't feel good at all. And I'm not sure if that is the right type of thing to be feeling or if it's if it's it because it might be actually it might be just good feedback and it also might be a pattern so i'm gonna look into that see what the fuck is actually going on there struggling to feel like i've earned anything at time in certain areas at times i just struggle to appreciate my wins i feel like it comes from this i don't feel like i've earned things properly it probably become it probably comes from a decent place meaning there could be again challenge right there or there could be a pattern that's manifesting or it could be just like, yo, I actually haven't earned it. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not really sure where to set the bar because if I set it too high on earning, I will never feel like good type of thing because you can set your bar too high in terms of expectation and then you're just fucked because you're never, you're never happy enough. So these are, I just don't know. I'm not sure. So with Ever After coming up and other, a bunch of other random shit, I, I've got like this this stress around me of what do I say to people when they ask how are things type of thing because they're not amazing but like they are progressing but just like also not the way people would think like uh, one client for me is quite exciting because it means so much more from it's not just like a one time deal with a client in terms of moxie energetics but at the same time I do require more I'm fucking aware of that but uh, yeah I just don't feel like I've done enough. It's just like this ongoing pattern. I'm not even sure if there is a a limit. Like, what it, will I ever feel like I've done enough? Or am I just forever going to be chasing this feeling of trying to do enough? But nev it's like this never-ending hamster wheel, if you will. And I'm not sure if I should just step off that or if I should keep going. And maybe it's not a hamster wheel. It's actually a race. I don't, I don't, I don't actually know. I just know I'm very confused with that aspect. And I'm also just, I just don't want to answer the question of how things are going because I don't think they're going as well as they should be. But equally, don't not ask me that just because you heard this, because I like it as pressure, meaning it's good for people to keep me in check. And then I like am more motivated to do more shit next time. Unsure of what my next moves are for a job. Like I kind of want to get a customer service job slash sales because I just, my bank account's so fucking empty right now. And it'd be very fucking easy. I thank God for Mox Energetics, by the way, because it could turn just overnight with how fast I can deliver results. And the compensation that comes from that is not fucking small money. It's quite big um, in terms of a per client type of basis, if you will. So, or not per client. Anyways, I'm not going to get into this right now. The whole point is the job. Okay. I am unsure if I should get a job or not. And I also like have some challenges around like, the education, the lack of education, I mean, um, the lack of bullshit education is actually a better way of putting it because I do have a good education from people that have actually done shit instead of some ed education in, uh, in bullshit, which is what school is to me. So <laughs> yeah. Um, and also like my resume, it's just like, it's not the best resume and I have to, I have to overcome that. And I'm thinking about doing video resumes, shout out fucking D fluff, good times. And yeah, so it, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing there, but I have to probably figure out some sort of thing. I noticed myself being also attached to people doing things like me and like for, forgetting that my journey is not their journey and there is more than one way of doing things. And that also just like attachment of trying to bring people with me and uh, remembering that, hey, if they want to go down a shitty path, they, they just I have to let them. And that sucks. I really don't want to. 
but and it's also it might not be a shitty path or it or it could be i that is up for time to the like that time will tell obviously but yeah that's tough for me for sure i kind of always want to bring people with me but i can't I have to do them where did i grow the most practicing pitches this is very uncomfortable for me but i continue going with it and it feels so fucking right and I'm, like I said earlier, I'm getting better at being prepared because prepar preparation is a massive part of success and I haven't done a good job of it in the past. So I'm glad I'm scheduling this in and actually doing it and putting on my power list as well. It's working well. Getting up earlier. Yeah, so like the 5 a.m. type of thing. I like that. I'm not exactly sure what the ideal start time and end time is or if I should do naps still or if I should cut out naps and just add it to that sleep or if I should change the start and end times, like what time am I going to bed, what time am I waking up, if I should increase or decrease the duration of sleep, probably increase is what I'm feeling right now. Um, that type of thing, but I'm experimenting a lot and it's, it is taking a lot of discipline to stay up when, uh, when I'm exhausted as fuck. Clarifying my vision. Though this was only two pages and it didn't take me a ton of time, this changed me forever. Like. When you clarify your vision with specificity and allow yourself to dream fucking big, you become a different person. I feel, I felt and continue to feel different after doing that. It's just, I don't even exactly know why it is the case, but it absolutely is the case. I strongly encourage you to do so. It just grew me a ton. Like right now, things matter so much less in the short term, meaning like I don't have to stress as much about dumb shit because I know like long term this is where I'm headed and I will take a fucking like I'll, I'll go everywhere and it's like because it's not a straight line to get there but I will uh I will pursue this long term and now I'm much more confident in knowing where I'm going long term I feel much more optimistic about the future and I have a I have a vision in my mind now that I can that I can quickly bring up when needed and I specifically have one clear image that I love so much about being on stage type of thing and it represents something very important to me. And uh, yeah, I also, but also equally, since then, I haven't done a good job of refreshing that and making sure I'm continuously adding to it. If I could do that, that'd be even better. And making sure that I have like a list or something where I can bring it up and be like, yo, this is my vision right here. And just making sure I'm continuously drawing that because it's, it's just sitting on paper right now and I haven't looked at it since really. I'm just trying to think of things here and there. But overall, it pulls me so much instead of trying to push things now. It's just magnetizing me at an energetic level. It's just way different. And uh, you will become a different person when you properly allow yourself to dream big. And it's you become permanently stretched. You can't go back after. It's incredible. Highly recommend. What am I obsessed with right now? Of course ever after. We're so close now. We're four fucking days away. Excited to see everyone. But uh, what I wanted to cover here specifically is... This idea of treating it like a bodybuilding competition. <laughs> My buddy Tyler Ferreira, I was texting him about some some uh, numbers and like what I would have to split squat in order to put two people on my shoulders at the same time. And we were laughing because I almost treated it like a bodybuilding competition. I'm not into bodybuilding or competitions, but like it is as if I am treating it as such. I train, 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 train all year for festivals. And then obviously it's not just for festivals, but that's a side benefit of it all. And then for that last little bit, I decided to cut and that's what I did this year. And it just is so much like a bodybuilding competition. It's hilarious. And equally, I like take it to another level where I like memorize all the words and shit like that for the pre-drops. And I know so much of the songs and the sets and all that jazz, so it is really funny. And I love the idea of that because it's funny as fuck. But overall, I'm just so fucking pumped forever after that'll be a blast. I hope that I feel like I've earned it, at, earned it at that point. And I hope I have an incredible weekend because this is something that means a ton to me. And equally, before I do all this, like before I go to Ever After, I'm absolutely gonna detach and use the Marcus Aurelius trick to make sure that it's off a pedestal because if it's too on a pedestal, I start caring too much and then expectations are too high, etc. Also take the time to clarify my intentions ahead of time and yeah, I'm fucking pumped though.
Can't wait to see everyone. Can't wait to go rage. Can't wait to blast the fucking dubstep and have just a killer weekend. I'm pumped. And equally also having Brian here for six days or whatever the fuck he's here for, that's gonna be fun as fuck as well. Reflections 47 complete. What a better feeling this is. The second draft compared to the first. The first was like, ugh, get me out here to everything. The second is like, okay, this actually came out pretty good. And this was what I was kind of visualizing before. Uh, it was almost like a fuck yeah, which is how I kind of feel right now. So I'm glad this episode came out pretty good. Um, it's so much better than the first one. You have no fucking idea. And uh, yeah, if you liked it enough, please do me a favor, share, engage with this somehow, like, comment, subscribe, follow, etc. Please do me a favor, follow along and subscribe because I po I'm posting my journey here. And as time goes on, I'm going to be doc continuing to document and bring you value in the process. That is my goal to capture as much as possible. And then hopefully you can apply it in your life somehow. And uh, yeah, anyways, appreciate you watching, listening so much. Thank you for taking the time. It's been cool as fuck to hang with you. And I hope you have a killer week, a killer day. I hope you go and dominate life. I hope you grow a ton. I hope you crush your goals and dreams. I hope you expand your vision. I hope you, and yeah, I don't even know. That motorcycle completely threw me off. <laughs> Anyways, hope you have a fucking incredible day. And my name is Josh Moxie and I'll catch you later. I'm really pumped for this guy, but can you please shut the fuck up? I'm trying to record here. <laughs>